Hi everyone, welcome back to the Techimaki channel. Today, we're going to focus on continuing the implementation by adding a new service called orders. This new order service contains a relationship with menu and we want to make sure that we can access in a very easy and simple way the menu services and get the response from these APIs. So how are we going to do this? That's what we're going to find out in this video. So check this out. If you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and also click on the notifications so then you can receive notifications as soon as I publish new videos. And if you have already done so, make sure to share that with your colleagues and friends so you can help me spread this free content. All right, so here we are in the order controller. In the order controller, we have some APIs for the order. One is add or update, the second one is get, and that's all. We have also the structures. So here we have the order. Inside of the order, we have the ID, we have the order items, and then basically you have here the quantity, unit price, unit tax, and the product ID. So you may see a lot of similarities here, right? One is that the order item actually is what product the customer has chosen to its order. And then this data, like for example, unit price, unit tax, we have that available in our menu catalog. So we're going to need to ask the menu service by calling its API to give it to us the information about the price and the tax, because we don't want the user interface to send this information for us. We want to get from the right source, which is the source of truth, and in this case, the menu catalog, okay? So in order to do this, we need to come back here to the add or update, and then add an extra step here that will trigger the menu service in order to get the additional data. Because if you look at the order to put, you're going to see here that order to put doesn't have the information about, if you go to order item to put, you're going to see that it doesn't have the information about price, neither the information about tax. And also, of course, uh, it only contains the information about the product ID. So let's understand how with the product ID, we can retrieve the details of this product and then insert that on the orders database. And you might be thinking or wondering, why are we kind of duplicating the data from tax and price in the orders service? It is to make sure that we are going to keep the separation of responsibility and we are not going to be uh, dependent on the database of the menu catalog. We are going to be decoupled. We have APIs that we call in order to get this information, but to persist this data in the order, we are going to save the data in its database because this information is necessary for the order calculation. So then we can get the totals, we can get a lot of information without having to depend on the menu. We depend at a certain point where we just get that information and then retrieve this to the order. But after that, we save this and keep this in the order context so we don't need to keep like calling all the time menu for everything that we are going to do internally in the context of the order. And also it's good if you think like, for example, maybe in the future, the price of the menu may change, but we want to record what was the price that the customer paid for that product at that specific time. So in order to keep this separation of concerns, the separation of responsibility between orders and menu, we store the, some data of the order inside of the order database, okay? So let's go back here and continue. All right, so in order to communicate with the menu service that contains the product API, we need to create a service proxy. Basically, it's a class where we're going to encapsulate all the logic in order to call and to contact the menu service, okay? So let's do it. Let's create here the public interface I product service proxy and this interface will contain one method for now because that's all that we need uh, it's going to be product to get as a response and the name of this method is get all right and this get is going to receive a product ID as a parameter perfect so now let's implement a class that uses this interface so let's do it public class product service proxy and it will implement i product service proxy let's implement all the methods which is only one in this case and then let's just do the following 
Oh, there is one important thing that we need to take into consideration now. As this is going to be a service proxy, this needs to receive in the constructor of this class an instance of the HTTP client that is going to be the one, use it to directly make the HTTP call and retrieve the data as a response from the product REST API. Let's create this in the constructor over here. So I'm going to go here in the constructor and expect to receive an HTTP client. And let's define here a field, private read-only HTTP client, and use this HTTP client over here. We're going to assign this client here to the HTTP client field. And in the get, let's do the following. HTTP client dot get is string, because we are going to return whatever this the REST API of menu gives to us as a string, and then we're going to parse it and deserialize to a C -sharp object, okay? So let's do get string async and specify the URL. In order to specify the URL, we need to know what is the URL where the menu is running. This is going to be hard coded for now, but in the future, we are going to improve it, okay? So let's take a look here on the menu, and then the menu is running. So let's just uh, go here and take a look at the Swagger UI of the menu. So this is the URL of the menu. Let's go back. And then in the orders, let's specify this URL. Then product, which is the name of our REST resource. And then a query string with the product ID. And one thing that we can do very easily here is to create a string interpolation. So let's use dollar as the way to express that we want to use a string interpolation, and then product ID. We specify this in brackets. Whatever is in brackets is understood as the variable, okay? So then we specify brackets and product ID. Then let's close this. And here we are going to return as a response. We are going to get the product. It's a product string for now. Let's await because it is an asynchronous method. And if we want to use the await, we need to make sure that this method is async. And then if it is async, it needs to return a task. So let's specify here that we want to return a task of product to get. This needs to use uh, system threading tasks. And after we receive these, let's use a very interesting library that we have available by default. That is the Newtonsoft JSON. The Newtonsoft JSON can actually parse any JSON structure to C Sharp object. So that makes it very easy in our case to parse the data that is going to be returned by our menu REST API. So then let's go here, do the return, and the return is going to be the JSON convert dot this realize object product string. All right, so now we are disrealizing, but we need to specify what is the type that we want to disrealize. We want to disrealize the product to get. Cool, so then it matches and now it is working as expected. We just need to make sure that in the interface, we specify the task, okay? We want to return the get, it is a task. Now let's consume this product service proxy in our controller. Let's go there and let's do it. Okay, so here in the order controller, let's do the following. I product service proxy. And here I'm going to declare also another field. This field is I product service proxy. And specify here product service proxy. And use this field to be receiving the instance from the constructor. Okay, so product service proxy. And here in the add or update, we are going to create a for, a for each loop, where we are going to, for every product that is specified, we're going to go to the remote resource, which is the product, and get the price and the text. Let's do it. So for each var item in order item, I'm going to actually do order dot order item. Yeah. And then let's call the service proxy. The good thing about the service proxy is that it encapsulates all the call to the HTTP client. So then we don't need to worry about any HTTP client, uh, URLs or anything in the 
controller side. So let's just specify here product service proxy dot get and then let's pass the item dot product ID. Perfect. So then after we retrieve the product, let's define a variable here called product. And then we're going to set inside of the item all the information about the product. So item dot unit price is going to be product dot price. Right. Oh, important here. We also need to specify that this is a result because this is an asynchronous method, right? I think the best thing is to rename this to get async, right? And then we are going to consume the get async and get the result of this get async. And then we're going to set this on the unit price here. So we're going to set product.price to the unit price. Item.unit text we're going to set to products.tex. All right, so now we are almost finished, okay? So let's go now to the startup and make sure that we inject our service proxy. But the way that we're going to inject is not using add singleton or anything like this. We are going to add as an HTTP client. And the beauty of it is that by adding HTTP client, it's an extension that actually solves everything. All the details about an HTTP client are resolved by this add HTTP client, including availability of this HTTP client instance that we are going to receive on the constructor of our service proxy. So let's see this work in practice. So services dot add HTTP client. And here I'm going to specify I product service proxy and here product service proxy. So this is how this product service proxy is going to receive an HTTP client as soon as it's instantiated. Okay. So the good thing is also that this HTTP client, we can also customize it and put some default information there that we want to use when we are actually triggering the call. So let's see that in practice right here. Client, and then we can establish and define more information in this client that is going to be injected in the product service proxy. For example, we can define the base address. So the base address is going to be a new URI. And here let's copy and bring the uh, URL of the menu that is hard coded there in the product service proxy. Okay, so let's get it from here and just leave the the resource. So let's go back to the startup and in the base address, let's define this URL. I'm not going to enter into the details on how to put this on the app settings. So I'm going to skip that part. I just wanted to show how easier it is to set the base address in here. Okay, and we're going to use it in the future as well. So now let's test our solution. I'm going to hit play. And let's just make sure that we have the menu started because we're going to consume data from the menu. Okay, let's get one product from the menu as well. So I'm going to come here in the menu. In the menu, I'm going to get the ID of one product. Then I'm going to come here in the order and try it out. I'm going to remove the order ID because I want to create a new order ID. I'm also going to remove an order item ID because I also want to create a new order item ID. And then let's specify here 10 as a quantity and the product ID is going to be the one that we got from the menu catalog, okay? So it needs to be a valid one. So now let's hit execute and this is going to go on the menu get the price and then use that information in order to create our order in our order item let's do it let's create an execute over here and then let's see the end result the end result is basically success okay it's 204 which means no content so let's check in the raven db what actually happened i'm going to go here on the raven db go to orders and here in the orders we have a new item and this new item is this one. Let's enter and see. Basically it got appropriately the unit price and the unit tax as we expected because we specified the product that contained the unit price as 12 and the unit tax as 0.2. All right, but that's a lot for today. In the next video, we are going to add some resilience to the process and also make some other improvements. I hope to see you soon. 